Aquaculture typically happens in coastal ponds, inland lakes, or fixed offshore cages anchored to the seabed. But what if the farm itself could move? What if you could load juvenile fish onto a vessel, sail to the Arctic or Antarctic, where water conditions are optimal, and harvest premium seafood in an environment impossible to replicate on land? It sounds like speculative fiction. But in March 2025, China launched a vessel that turns this concept into operational reality. The ship is called Guoxin No. 1, the world's first mobile deep-sea aquaculture platform with dynamic positioning capability. It holds 80,000 cubic meters of seawater, which is roughly equivalent to 32 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The vessel is nearly the size of an aircraft carrier, yet its purpose isn't military. It's industrial. It can navigate to any ocean, anchor in deep water, and produce 8,000 tons of fish annually without relying on coastal infrastructure or traditional cage systems. The question isn't whether China can build such a vessel. The question is why, and what this technology signals about the future of global food production. China is home to 1.4 billion people, nearly one-fifth of the global population. The scale of its food consumption is staggering. As early as 1994, Lester Brown, founder of the World Watch Institute, posed a question that resonated across global policy circles. Who will feed China? At the time, China's population was 1.14 billion and still growing rapidly. The concern wasn't rhetorical. It was rooted in the arithmetic of agricultural capacity versus demographic demand. Today, China consumes more than 800 million tons of grain annually, accounting for roughly one-third of global grain consumption. Meat consumption follows a similar trajectory, approximately 7 billion chickens per year, 700 million pigs, 50 million head of cattle, and 400 million sheep. These figures illustrate not just China's demand within the global food market, but the structural pressure that demand places on agricultural and livestock supply chains worldwide. Seafood consumption follows the same pattern, but with a crucial difference. China has 4.7 million square kilometers of maritime territory, and seafood is deeply embedded in Chinese cuisine and culture. Data shows that China has ranked first globally in total aquatic product output for 30 consecutive years, accounting for more than 40% of the world's total. In 2023 alone, China's aquatic product output reached 91 million tons, with marine products contributing 56 million tons of that total. But volume is only part of the story. As living standards rise, Chinese consumers are demanding higher quality and greater variety. The problem is that premium seafood, species like large yellow croaker, grouper, and turbot, require specific environmental conditions that are difficult to replicate in coastal farms. Traditional offshore cages are limited by water depth, temperature fluctuations, and proximity to pollution. Deep sea species and cold water fish are even harder to farm domestically, forcing China to rely on imports or long distance fishing fleets that face rising fuel costs, declining fish stocks, and increasing international scrutiny over sustainability. Faced with these constraints, Chinese scientists began exploring a radical alternative. What if the farm itself could travel to the fish, rather than waiting for the fish to be caught and transported? In 2018, Chinese researchers proposed an audacious concept, build a vessel large enough to function as a self-contained aquaculture facility, capable of sailing to any ocean and farming fish in optimal natural conditions. The idea was met with widespread skepticism. Critics argued that ships have limited internal space, making it impractical to achieve the scale needed to meet China's consumption demands. Others questioned the engineering feasibility. How do you maintain stable water quality, control temperature, and manage fish health in a moving vessel exposed to open ocean conditions? But in March 2025, those doubts were answered. Chinese state media announced the successful launch of Guaxin No. 1, the world's first floating, dynamically positioned, deep-sea aquaculture workboat. 
the vessel measures 154 meters in length, 44 meters in width, and 24.25 meters in depth, with a maximum draft of 20 meters. It can hold 80,000 cubic meters of aquaculture water, equivalent to 32 standard swimming pools, and is designed to operate in any sea area, including deep ocean zones far from coastal infrastructure. Unlike traditional fishing vessels that harvest wild fish, Guaxin No. 1 is a mobile seafood factory. It carries juvenile fish, nurtures them to market size in controlled onboard environments, and processes them for export, all without ever needing to dock at a coastal facility. The vessel is equipped with 12 large breeding chambers, each capable of holding thousands of fish in precisely controlled conditions. An advanced water exchange system replaces the water in each chamber 16 times per day, ensuring that dissolved oxygen levels, temperature, and salinity remain within optimal ranges. This isn't just a technical achievement, it's a fundamental rethinking of how aquaculture can be practiced. Instead of bringing the ocean's bounty to land, Guoxin No. 1 brings the farm to the ocean. The primary species farmed on Guoxin No. 1 is the large yellow croaker a fish prized in Chinese cuisine for its delicate flavor and firm texture. But large yellow croaker is notoriously difficult to farm. The species is extremely sensitive to environmental disturbances, particularly noise. It can tolerate a maximum of 150 decibels of ambient sound. Beyond that threshold, stress levels rise, growth slows, and mortality rates increase. To address this, Guoxin No. 1 uses an electric propulsion system that keeps onboard noise levels below 60 decibels, well within the tolerance range for large yellow croaker. The vessel is also equipped with 2,180 high-precision sensors that monitor fish behavior, water quality, and environmental parameters in real time. The sensors use facial recognition technology to track individual fish, allowing farm managers to identify health issues, feeding patterns, and growth rates with unprecedented precision. Temperature control is another critical factor. Large yellow croaker thrives in water temperatures between 12 and 16 degrees Celsius. To maintain these conditions, Guaxin No. 1 features a rotating flow field system that regulates water circulation speed between 0.2 and 0.4 meters per second. The vessel draws high-quality seawater from depths of 100 meters, where temperatures are stable and nutrient levels are high, and pumps it into the breeding chambers through an intelligent filtration system. This creates an environment that closely mimics the fish's natural habitat, despite being enclosed within a moving vessel. The results are striking. Although the stocking density in Guoxin No. 1's chambers is four to six times higher than in traditional offshore cages, the survival rate of large yellow croaker exceeds 95%. The meat quality is comparable to wild-caught fish, commanding premium prices in domestic and international markets. One of the most remarkable aspects of Guoxin No. 1 is, honestly, its level of automation. The entire production cycle, from stocking juvenile fish to feeding, monitoring, harvesting, processing, and freezing, can be completed with minimal human intervention. The vessel actually requires only 35 crew members to operate, and each crew member oversees the production of more than 200 tons of fish per year. This brings the total annual output of the vessel to approximately 7,800 tons. The automation system also enables intelligent decision-making. Based on real-time data from onboard sensors and external oceanographic monitoring, the vessel's navigation system can select the most suitable sea area for farming at any given time. For example, if water temperatures rise due to seasonal changes, the vessel can relocate to cooler latitudes. If a harmful algal bloom, commonly known as a red tide, is detected nearby, the vessel can move to unaffected waters, and if a typhoon approaches, the vessel can reposition to avoid the storm track entirely. This flexibility is, without a doubt, a fundamental advantage over traditional fixed-cage aquaculture, which is vulnerable to environmental shocks. 
Coastal fish farms have been devastated by red tides, temperature spikes, and severe weather events that wipe out entire stocks. Guaxin No. 1, by contrast, can simply sail away from these threats. The efficiency gains are substantial. The breeding cycle on Guaxin No. 1 is one-third shorter than in traditional cage systems, allowing for two full production cycles per year. According to project estimates, the vessel's annual output value is projected to reach $41.3 million, with net profit after costs exceeding $8.26 million. But the economic potential extends beyond large yellow croaker. The vessel is designed to farm a variety of species, including high-value cold-water fish, like Antarctic toothfish, often marketed as Chilean sea bass, and ice fish. These species are difficult or even impossible to farm in coastal China due to temperature constraints, but Guoxin No. 1 can sail to polar or subpolar waters and cultivate them in their native environment. This opens up entirely new markets and revenue streams that were previously inaccessible. Why does this matter? The strategic logic behind the investment is, well, pretty compelling. Building a vessel like Guaxin No. 1 is honestly a massive financial undertaking. The construction costs alone run into hundreds of millions of dollars, and when you add in operating expenses, fuel, crew salaries, maintenance, feed, it really adds up. So, why would anyone invest in this technology when traditional coastal aquaculture is cheaper and already well-established? The answer comes down to three interconnected challenges. Environmental degradation, resource depletion, and market demand. First off, China's coastal waters are increasingly polluted and overfished. Decades of industrial runoff, coastal development, and intensive aquaculture have really degraded water quality in nearshore areas. Fish farmed in these environments often carry contaminants, and wild fish populations have dropped sharply. Moving aquaculture into deeper, cleaner waters addresses both of these issues. It reduces environmental impact on coastal ecosystems and produces healthier, higher-quality fish. Second, global marine resources are under severe stress. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, more than one-third of global fish stocks are overfished, and a lot more are fished right at the maximum sustainable levels. Improved fishing technology has made things more efficient, but it's also sped up depletion. Without new approaches to seafood production, the collapse of key fisheries isn't a question of if, but when. Mobile deep-sea aquaculture offers a scalable alternative that doesn't rely on wild fish stocks. And third, consumer demand is shifting. As incomes rise, Chinese consumers are willing to pay premium prices for sustainably farmed, high-quality seafood. Guoxin No. 1 is positioned to capture this market by producing fish that meet both quality and sustainability criteria. Fish farmed in pristine ocean waters with controlled diets, minimal antibiotics, and transparent supply chains. In a global context, China isn't alone in pursuing this technology. China is not the only country exploring deep sea and mobile aquaculture. Norway, for example, is a global leader in salmon farming and has been developing deep sea cage systems since the 1990s. Norwegian fish farms are increasingly located in offshore and deep water sites, far from coastal pollution, where strong ocean currents provide natural water exchange and reduce disease transmission. Norway's aquaculture industry generates billions of dollars annually and serves as a model for sustainable fish farming. Sweden and the United States have also invested in offshore aquaculture research, though honestly, Progress has been slower because of regulatory hurdles, high costs, and public opposition in some coastal communities. Iceland has experimented with land-based recirculating aquaculture systems that use heated geothermal water to farm species like salmon and arctic char in controlled indoor facilities. But China, well, China is pursuing deep-sea aquaculture at a scale unmatched by any other nation. In addition to Guashin No. 1, China has built six more 150,000-ton aquaculture vessels, each with an estimated annual output of 8,000 tons.
Over the next five years, China plans to invest $10 billion to build 5,000 large deep water cages, five to 10 large scale intelligent aquaculture platforms, and four national level marine ranches. The goal is to create what Chinese officials call a blue granary, a vast network of offshore food production facilities that reduce dependence on coastal land, conserve freshwater resources, and supply urban markets with locally farmed seafood. And the next phase is even more ambitious. Building on the experience gained from Guoxin No. 1, Chinese companies are developing a second-generation design. Plans call for the construction of 50 large deep-sea aquaculture vessels over the next decade, forming a fleet with a combined tonnage exceeding 10 million tons. The projected annual output is 400,000 tons of marine fish, with an estimated annual output value of $50 billion. The broader implications of this technology really do go far beyond China's seafood market. The rise of mobile deep-sea aquaculture represents a new model for food production. One that decouples farming from land, reduces environmental impact, and enables production in places we just couldn't reach before. For countries with limited arable land but extensive maritime zones, this technology offers a way to achieve food security without relying on imports. Island nations, Arctic states, and countries with long coastlines but shallow coastal shelves could use similar systems to produce protein domestically. It also introduces a new dynamic into geopolitical competition over ocean resources. As countries compete for access to fish stocks, shipping lanes, and seabed minerals, control over mobile aquaculture technology could become a strategic asset. Nations that master this technology can farm fish in international waters, exclusive economic zones, or even in disputed maritime areas, raising all sorts of questions about jurisdiction, regulation, and resource rights that international law hasn't fully addressed yet. There are environmental considerations, too. While mobile aquaculture reduces pressure on coastal ecosystems and wild fish stocks, it's not without risks. Escaped fish could introduce invasive species into new ecosystems. Waste from high-density farms, even in deep water, could accumulate and affect local marine life. The long-term ecological impact of operating thousands of mobile fish farms across the world's oceans is still kind of uncertain. But the technology does offer solutions to some of aquaculture's most persistent problems. By farming in deep, well-oxygenated water with strong natural currents, mobile platforms reduce the need for antibiotics and chemicals used to control disease in traditional cages. By relocating to avoid algal blooms and storms, they reduce the risk of catastrophic losses that have plagued coastal farms. And by producing fish closer to their natural environment, they improve product quality and cut down the carbon footprint associated with long-distance wild-catch fisheries. Guaxin No. 1 is more than just a fishing vessel. It's really a prototype for a new kind of food system, one that treats the ocean not as a resource to be extracted, but as a space to be cultivated. For thousands of years, humanity has farmed the land. Over the past century, we've farmed coastal waters. Now, we're starting to farm the open ocean, the vessel represents a convergence of technologies, precision sensors, electric propulsion, automated feeding systems, real-time oceanographic monitoring, that together make mobile aquaculture economically viable at scale. It also represents a shift in how we think about food production, not as something that happens in fixed locations, but as a process that can be optimized by moving production to the places where conditions are best. China's investment in this technology is a signal. It signals confidence in the scalability of deep-sea aquaculture. It signals a long-term strategy to secure food supplies in a world where arable land is scarce, fresh water is contested, and climate change is disrupting traditional agricultural zones. And it signals a willingness to experiment with radical solutions to problems that conventional approaches just haven't solved. Whether other nations follow China's lead remains to be seen. But the lesson is clear. The next frontier of food production won't be found in expanding farmland or increasing crop yields.
It will be found in the deep blue waters that cover 70% of our planet and in the vessels that can turn those waters into farms.